Pochettino is still manager of Chelsea Football Club in what is arguably the most important match of his Chelsea career thus far as the Blues travel to Aston Villa in this FA Cup fourth round replay. And he certainly doesn't deserve this, but you certainly do. <laughs> I'm sure as to how much longer it is, if it is at all anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Pochettino! Mauricio's men come off of yet another defeat, this time to Wolves, having now conceded eight goals in our last two games. It was back in December that Chelsea last saw back-to-back -back defeats in the league. That then saw our fantastic run of form, which per Mochettino, Mauricio Pochettino sorry, has been banging on about as of late. Um, up until now, of course, where it's all gone tits up again. And I stress... As a majority, a majority, a fully fit team, besides James and, Ch uh, and Colwell, the injury excuse is now null and void. There is no hiding now for the manager, for the players, for the owners, for the backroom staff. This game, whilst enormous, is not going to change a whole lot in the scheme of things. Pochettino is virtually out the door already, and it's going to take a hell of a lot, a miracle even, to change anything now. The man himself is said to believe that this is his, maybe one of his last few games at Chelsea, but that his time at Stamford Bridge is coming to an end with sources regarding him as a dead man walking. He knows he will not be in the dugout uh, come the start of the 24-25 Premier League season. That said, it is likely that he will be uh, there to manage the side come the Carabao Cup final later this month it, it all comes down to ffp but it is what it is otherwise i reckon he'd be gone already the reports coming out over the last days or so have been outrageous if you haven't heard them already i'm here to tell you what we've been told at least from who i know um being you know you, you already know. Training uh, being described as a shit show. Players such as Enzo and Caicedo are being described as considerably fatter than what they were when they joined the club. Performance analysts within the club have been told to reduce the length of analysis packages given to players because the players can't take on board the feedback given and overall, it's not well received, a.k.a. they don't like what, what they're being told, basically. Um, and the fact that what they're being told is, you're shite, more or less. It's ridiculous that the players receive feedback, don't like what they get told on their performance and choose to just ignore it. These are children at the club. Children. It's no wonder nothing is progressing. And yet, and I stress, we cannot allow this to become the norm. We, the fans, are expecting too much. Our expectations are too high. When, unbeknownst to us, this is going on behind the scenes the whole time. No wonder, no wonder we're being told our expectations are too high. Poch knows what's going on. And I'm not here to defend him, but... He's the spokesperson of this club. He's the one coming out and telling us in these press conferences. The players can't take criticism or, or refuse to take anything on board. They're fat, out of shape and aren't training properly. Poch knows that, which is why when you see social media videos over the last year or so, you, you, you would be led to believe that something entirely different is going on. You, you see them, it's well edited. Propaganda is what you're being shown. You see us scoring worldy after worldy, play after play, and you think, Fuck it, Jesus Christ, we're looking good. Where's this on the pitch? When in reality, this is not the reflection of what is going on at Chelsea Football Club. Players are flat out refusing to engage in individual training after the team training is completed, is what we're being told. They're just flat out saying, nah, <laughs> I'm not really feeling it, I'm going home. Again, it's absolutely no surprise we're being told to lower our expectations or that they are too high. Pochettino, if anything, is trying to warn the fans. He knows he's out the door. He's telling us, telling us in these press conferences because he knows Bowley and his goons are never going to show the real situation unless he gives hints. 
Again, I'm not defending him, but he's, I, I get the hint he's, uh, he's trying to help us here. He's just saying, we're fucked. We're absolutely fucked. I'm for the off -ski soon. You've got to watch this. <laughs> Whether I'm here or not, we're absolutely fucked. Completely and utterly bollocks. We have a side of Instagram players, all of which are younger than me. And, and I say that, I'm 28, right? As a child watching the sport, you had all ages of all ranges. It, 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 was, it was the balance. You had the youth players um, coming through the, 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 you know, through everything like that with the, the, the more experienced players to guide them. We have no experience except a 40-year-old fossil who, who, all things considered, is probably still one of our best players, but even then he's on the massive decline. Huge decline as of late. Reese James, injured for a living. Chilwell seemingly doesn't have the locker room. Gallagher's too young to have the locker room when he has the armbands. We're a mess. We're finished. We're absolutely finished. All three of them as well. James, when he does play, it's, you know, he's still worried. He clearly sees worried about getting injured again. Chilwell's been shit the last two games. Gallagher is just pissing everyone off, whether you like him or love him. <sighs> like him or hate him. <laughs> We're rotting from the inside out, and there is no way out because we have six, seven, eight, nine-year contracts with these kids who know, come rain or shine, come win, loss or draw, they're getting paid. They're getting paid. We, we can't afford to go for several players now. We're, we're stuck with this infection that is this current squad. And until they fix up and realize that eventually something has to change, your career's not gonna go anyway. You might be getting paid, but realistically, you're not gonna win fuck all playing the way that you are. You're actually, to, you're actually gonna have to try at some point. You're actually going to have to maybe train a little extra because let's face the facts, you're shite. Like I said, then we might stand a chance against Wolves next season instead of losing to them three games in a row for the first time in nearly 50 fucking years. 50 years! <laughs> It's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. Team news, who cares? Who actually cares? We're just going to play the same exact shit we always do. So really, who cares? Predictions wise, who knows anymore? Who even knows? This part of the segment of, the, of this preview show, it never fucking matters anymore. The days of predicting Chelsea may actually show up have gone now, let alone predicting a win. You never know what team you're going to get. Either the one that you're used to or that we've become used to, where they go a goal down and play out a shit and you just know as soon as you're one deal down, it's, that's it. Might as well pack up and go home. Or we get to, uh, we get one back, can somehow, somewhat hold up a fight and maybe get a result. Villa have just lost two of their last 23 games at home in all competitions. So suffice it to say, I think we're fucked again. Once again, even more so. And if we somehow get a result, then honestly, what is the point of predicting these anymore? Well, honestly, and I'll be happy, I guess. It seems virtually impossible with the morale that we've got right now, with the state of affairs right now, with the manager knowing he's halfway out the door, the players not giving a fuck. What does that say about the club if we suddenly come here and win against all odds after the last two performances that we put in? It becomes more annoying, if anything, if we win at this point, because what does it even mean anymore? It begs the question, why couldn't you do that in the last two games? Where was this last week? How can you lose back-to-back -back games conceding eight goals in five games and then beat a mostly in-form Aston Villa side in a cup tie away from home? We'll just have to wait and see. Much like them, I'm off. <laughs> My prediction, 3-0 Villa.